Gulf of Siam near the equator lies a Malayan peninsula. Victorially, it is the garden spot of the world, but a garden over which nature has placed a sign, and that sign reads, white man, exotic shrubs and vines cling to one another with tenacious fingers to obstruct his way. Ferocious animals and slithering monsters that crawl upon their bellies. The heat, the fever, the poisonous death that lurks in the bite of one mosquito. All the dips the jungle arms herself to repel him are to the white man a challenge, incentive. He wants to unveil the secret that is so viciously safeguarded to photograph it and bring it back to his fellow men. The success of the white man depends upon the loyal cooperation of the natives. And Mr. Skink dedicates this picture to the Malayans and Siamese who were so faithful and fought shoulder to shoulder with him and who had the biggest share of the dangers. This photo play is authentic in its locale and real in its action. In its making, we owed much to his, the assistance and aid given by His Highness, the Sultan of Pera, Sir Alang Eskandar Shah, Raja Rasman, and Siamese advisor, Persat Sukhum. Highness, Sultan of Pera, FMS, Sir Alang Eskandar Shah. Mr. Harry Skink. When after weeks of preparation we were ready to start upon our journey into the jungle, His Highness the Sultan, great luck. For the first time in his life, he consented to be photographed by a motion picture camera. Miss Joan Baldwin, a British scientist, was going with us. We thanked His Highness for his courtesy and cooperation which made our expedition possible, as it was he who supplied the elephants and men. His Highness warned us of the dangers of the Malay jungles, and then in his beautiful English, bade us farewell and assured us cooperation. Captain Lindsay Veers, British Jay at the Sultan's court, an aide camp to His Highness, introduced us to Badre Poe, who are elephant trained. Badre was a college-bred boy who also acted as interpreter on our expedition. Captain Veers was the last white man to bid us goodbye with his encouraging cheerio. We felt ourselves deeply indebted to him for the aid he had given us in arranging the expedition. The little village of Chumpan Kwa, these elephants and men were specially chosen for us by the Sultan. When we arrived at this jumping off place, we found everything in readiness for departure. Ali, a native boy, was all smiles as he met her for the first time. Madame, this little convent bred girl a beauty of her race answered to the name of beware with those eyes the servant problem solved badre then introduced us to our number one gunner captain nancy the best shot in the east our number one native we gave the word to start the hunt was on Our train consisted of 50 of the best elephants in the country. These animals are the passenger. Their burdens are all human ones. Our supplies and other necessities had been started on ahead. C, who was to meet us at the main camp, which was four weeks away. Slowly the train wended its way down the road leading to the jungle, defying the man-eating tiger, the lordly wild elephant, and the deadly python lying in its path. We were going into a strange new world with strange new laws.
The main wagon train had started two weeks ahead of us and were taking the roundabout and safer route. There were 64 carts and other conveyances in this train, drawn by oxen and water buffalo. The little fellows are oxen, the long horns are the buffalo. This train followed the horsemen who were a considerable distance ahead of them. The country here was comparatively tame. The wagons averaged three to 500 pound loads. Just off this road, the jungle starts. The thoroughfare might aptly be named a highway to hell. Here is the first river crossing encountered by the wagon. The captain warned the drivers if the oxen went too low in the water to tie their heads up to the carts, also to beware of crocodiles. and they said they had sent ox carts over the safer route. In order to get safely across, the carts had to be lightened, and each cart made four or five trips across the river. This could hardly be... We still insist it wasn't such a safe route, but then maybe we're wrong. They made it. Leaving the road, the elephant through the center of the jungle. Here's a jungle scout ready to pry a warning. While other busy sentinels started climbing to higher perches for better observation, a snake in the grass. But the size of the snake seemed to make no difference. We were used to Hollywood snakes, but this was the real. Notice that he will not allow the python to get a double turn on his hand. Mr. Skink gave orders to keep the python but not in his tent. Wild beasts are not the only danger have fallen victims of the fatal jungle fever. Its symptoms are somewhat like those of our influenza. Miss Baldwin was the first to be taken, and in the excitement, we didn't realize her danger. But she was too good. During the previous night, all the beaters had been sent out over a five-mile spread, ready for the signal to start the drive. Our cameras had been cleverly camouflaged behind screens of shrubbery. Other photographers had secured themselves to platforms in high trees. When the signal was given, the five-mile wide circle of beaters started to converge toward our cameras. Every animal within the circle was driven toward us. The hunt was on. It was not a hunt to kill. The gunners were instructed to use their weapons only for the defense of themselves and cameramen. With this sort of noise, no wonder the animals were on the move. Ah, another of our stars. Step by step, we made our way through to our other cameras. Thank <laughs> you. 
the boys after a real man killer. He had killed a native and was doomed to die. It is the custom of the jungle to spear any ant that has killed a hunter. What a rug this fellow made. But wanton killing was not the object of the expedition. They did it simply to survive. We followed our native beaters, driving, constantly driving. Tiger won't climb a tree. was too good a spot for pictures. There's a python. He got a native and an inhuman struggle was on. If he could only break the hole the python had on the tree, he would be safe. He'll shake him off. There he goes, he did it. decided to move their camera to a better spot. They were building only a screen for themselves, but there's no protection against a spot of death like this. We told best shot in the east, look, it's still breathing. If you think you're a good shot, the jury you find out, because if you miss, you'll never live to tell it. watching a cameraman prepare to get a panther. There he is, the most treacherous and hateful thing that lives. While this was going on, we kept advancing. We would have liked to have directed this scene, but nature handled it. Boy, this is going to be good. Watch. had to do it that way, the leopard was coming at him. for the captain. Short range shot, made it again. A kill worthy of any trophy room. 